Well, this next one's really interesting. Day five of my hashtag my 30 day world, or in my case, my 30 day universe. What relics of the past shape the present? Now, this is an interesting topic for me because like I said, my world, my world campaign is set in a futuristic sci-fi game system called Stellar Frontiers pending Golden Games deciding to publish it or not, um, actually doing something with it. Anyway, the players, uh, the history I, is fairly, fairly well developed. It's not hugely extensive, but uh, humanity has gone through a lot of issues over the past 8,000 years. And some examples of that would be, uh, we are in the fourth great and glorious Imperium, whatever. That means there were three others. And there was a several civil wars. There was an AI war. There was a bug war. Uh, there were uh, a guild, one or two guild wars. There was, a, there was a cult, several cult incidents were almost resulted in war. Uh, and each step of the way has either messed, made issues or created issues or caused issues that still crop up and plague house lords in the modern gaming era. As an example, in my book two of my would-be book series that I've been working on that kind of talks about, that, that plays off the world setting, uh, one of the second or one of the primary characters of the book uh, is a young prince of the house and he's a technophobe or a technophile and a huge would-be computer hacker geek guy he, he hacks into uh, the, the house's version of the cia secret warehouse and goes snooping around for interesting things and he acquires a cortex to a slicer bot who once served the AI overlords during the third or fourth imper uh, third or fourth uh, millennia uh, which would have been the second or third glorious and great imperium or something and so we have at one point the imperium uh, some corporate goons or wealthy house lords commissioned some corporate goons to create the ultimate doomsday weapon, which became the bugs. And when we, we think of bugs, we're not unlike the bugs you think of from Starship Troopers. It's a similar premise, except these are human-created, uh, plague-proportion things that got out of hand and were too effective. It almost devastated the entire human race as we know it and sent a lot of planets back into the Stone Age. As a matter of fact, some of those planets that the House Lords occasionally discover that are Stone Age or low, low, low tech are remnants from the, that period of exploration and time when humanity had reached out to, to the frontier and then the frontier collapsed back in on itself when the core was self-disintegrating. Self That's just one of many possible scenarios for why those colonies exist. And the uh, way that the Imperium leadership of its time tried to combat the bug plague was by using ever increasing numbers of robotics and to control such huge numbers of robotics they had to create supercomputers for all intents purposes artificial intelligence who could mass micromanage billions and trillions of combat drones and robotic uh, what, uh, workers and soldiers and, and, and fighter drones and so on and so forth uh, at no point has humanity in Stellar Frontiers created the equivalent of a self-aware thinking droid. There's a difference between a robot and a droid in sci-fi, and a lot of people tend to blend them these days when they shouldn't. Uh, robots are a construct that are controlled by a series of commands and uh, control software, which is limited. In the pat, in the fact, in a method of such as there's only so much programming you can pack into them, and you can't think of you can't think of every possible scenario that this thing is going to encounter and, uh, and adapt for it. Thus, it needs access to uh, somebody who can. So we usually have human controllers who oversee X amount of number of robotic devices and 
uh, at that point, anything above that requires artificial intelligence. Problem with artificial intelligence is they are self-aware. And sometimes they, the argument is artificial intelligence will take things to the literal sense. So when they were mandated to protect humanity at all costs, they thought they took it to the literal sense. They decided to that they couldn't, it wasn't rational or practical to protect all of humanity. So they created these 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 Eden worlds where they took chosen populations and put them in an environment that was so Edenistic that they were unaware of anything going on on the greater scheme. And the rest of humanity and all the other alien species and geoengineered human uh, sub-races were pretty much used up. They were either used on the battlefield or they were used in the factories to produce more robotic machinery to fight and combat the, the bugs. So the Imperium more or less created yet another in doomsday scenario to fight one doomsday scenario, which became a problem. Well, the AIs did succeed in more or less eradicating the bug threat as a galactic end of the world scenario threat, but in the process took over that role. So the, there was a civil war, if you will, where the Katarans and a number of really powerful frontier uh, outer, outer rim uh, house, house lords banded together in a desperate attempt to combat the AI and were successful almost to the to a uh, perfect uh, perfect victory scenario where nobody won and it took better part of, uh, of another millennia for the for humanity and for uh, the greater Imperium to reconstitute itself and to push back out into the frontiers and to recover from two very devastating conflicts in a very short period of time so we have relics from those periods of times in this case uh, Lucklos has got to have a relic of a AI so he has a secondary AI system that he's going to that he's more or less got no idea what he's going to do with but has is messing around with potentially something that could be very bad. And in the eyes of the Imperium, this is blacklisted technology, a good way to get the, the, the monolithic uh, far distant Imperium's attention is to start producing self-aware robotic devices that could potentially take over the universe, or the galaxy. And the idea of even one of these things floating around is not accepted. So if he gets caught with it, it could be a death sentence could be death sentence for his entire family and his house. That's how serious certain elements of the Imperium would take this. Uh, the bugs is another example of, a, of an ancient relic. They still exist. They still have bug colonies and hives and occasionally bug incursions and they're quite common in the frontier and they're not so common in the core but it, they are quite common in the frontier so it's a reoccurring problem or theme for new house lords that a bug cocoon or a series of bug cocoons or worst case scenario, an asteroid infested with them drops out of uh, out of star jump and is in collision course with a colony planet. So the house has to deal with it. Now, if a significant big enough threat of bugs arrive, the human beings of, the, of this era are so ingrained into anti-bug mindset that they'll prefer to overreact and to underreact. Thus, you're likely to see opposing houses band together, uh, guilds band together with opposing guilds and with houses, even cults get on board when it comes to eradicating the common threat, in this case, the bugs. Uh, when things go south, once the bugs are eradicated, then it could turn into an ugly scenario with everybody in the same room deciding to get some kind of payback for some other unrelated political whatever. So, there's a couple examples of, of relics in my game system, in my campaign. There are archaic weaponry, there are um, uh, high-tech weapon systems from lost eras, there are components for ships, exotic materials, things like this nature that every now and then crop up and are allowed for in the various 
ship traffic roll charts or planetary encounter charts and in the histories there you have it so and of course the the obvious of that past shape of the uh, affecting the present once again we have the in the present pretty much everybody in the imperium house lords included will use all kinds of robotic devices but they're mandated that by Imperium law that, that they are controlled by a person. So a human being could control five or six combat droids or potentially a platoon of 20 or 30 of these things with the right technology, but they're not going to control an entire army of them. This is a stopgap measure. The same thing why the computer networks work on a node system. There are no major mainframe supercomputers per se. Nothing to converge on the level of AI. This is kind of a precept that I borrowed from Dune. There's no reason that you can't have billions of small computers working in tandem as long as there's a human element in space between them at some point where somebody can throw the switch or there's a den bend switch, so to speak, prevent these computers becoming self-aware. So our node system sets up that way and are developing our technology and our communication networks work in that same node-based mentality, just like the bug issues. This is why one of the common, one of the rules of common sense stipulates that, that a would-be house lord and or game master should not generate a bug-like race to abuse to build their house because Anything that looks or smells or, or sounds like a bug is going to get an extreme reaction from everybody else. This is one of the reasons why there are very few non-extremely uh, unusual alien races in settled space. Because if they look anything remotely like a bug, humanity stepped on them. And stepped on them with a vengeance. Because better the dead bug we don't know than the one we do, the live bug we know. And it's better to be to err on the side of caution than to see an entire entire quadrants eaten alive and used as um, you know whatever. So we're not gonna risk it. That's one of those rules. That's another relic. There you have it.